Well, there it is. Hey, this is Witty. Welcome to a breakdown of the patch changes. As of the 23rd of July, the patch went through on the 24th, but these are notes taken from the uh, 23rd of July. The uh, Here's technical alpha patch notes. And uh, yeah, I printed them off. I had a little read through. I highlighted the bits I wanted to mention basically the important stuff that you want to know without going into too much detail because if I went over all of this it would be a very long video and the idea of this video is to give you quick information about everything that's coming up so that's what my aim is to do here so anything I mentioned during the video uh, if there's links to it I will put a timestamp to what I'm talking about so for example if I'm talking about heroes 10 minutes into the video it will say something like 10 minutes to 10, 12 minutes and it will give you a link to the actual heroes for example regar page if that's what I'm pulling up information from so anything I'm referring to if there's a link to it it will be in the video description so feel free to have a little look there and without further ado let's have a little look at the changes so oh actually I haven't even showed you have I there you go look yeah just did my little highlights you can see in the webcam. That was um, feedback from you guys. Uh, so if you've got any um, more feedback you want to give or anything you want to see different, done differently, what you like, what you don't like, please feel free to put it in the comment and I'll have a read and I'll try to make uh, changes or adjustments towards that. Okay, so the first thing to mention during this is, of course... The new battleground, Garden of Terror. So, Garden of Terror is a brand new free lane battleground. It's been added to the Heroes of the Storm and is now available to play in all matchmaking queues. I have only played one game since I got on, and that was Black uh, Hearts Bay. So, unfortunately, I did manage to get Garden of Terror. But uh, when I do get it, I will basically do a whole video probably just talking about that battleground on its own merits. But for the moment, I'm just talking about the patch notes. So, if you want to know more about the Garden of Terror, There'll be a timestamp in the video. The next bit I want to go on to, if we can, will be the new hero. Aha! Uh -huh. So, yes, uh, Regar, Earth Fury, Shaman of the Earth and Ring. Uh, he's a support hero from the Warcraft franchise, and he's been added to the Heroes of the Storm and is now available for you guys to play. Hopefully you have a key, and if not, then hopefully you'll get one soon, because Blizzard are basically opening it up more and more. And the more of these patch changes that keep going through, the more players I'm expecting to see go through. So he's got a lot of cool abilities. He's a new guy. If you want to know more about him, I did do another video about it. I might put a link to that as well in the video description just basically going over his abilities what I think my opinions but if not then there'll be a link to the actual proper sort of um, web page for him so leveling system and rewards is the next item I want to look at okay so ooh, this I'm gonna read out a lot of these ones because this is quite important the out of game leveling system has been reworked and many of the progression re rewards it has to offer have been reorganized cooperative and versus games no longer need to be unlocked and are now available from player level one so the XP bonus earned by winning games in versus mode has been increased from 20,000 to 50,000 XP per win so mm, that's kind of a good thing but uh, not a really big deal because I always played in versus mode but according to Blizzard a lot of people play in co-op mode but at least this way if you play in co-op mode you're not going to be sort of punished for it. you still get benefits for it so that's good uh, the rewards for leveling up are now as follows so levels two and four you get 1000 gold each level six you get daily quests level eight and ten each unlock a new hero rotation slot level 12 gives you 2000 gold level 15 unlocks the ability to use artifacts or oh, that's something we'll get on to uh, not too distant future and awards 2000 gold uh, levels 20 25 30 35 basically just give you gold 3000 gold each so um yeah there's a few things here and there but nothing really too major there just the main thing to pay attention to is the artifacts being added in and obviously you're just getting gold so that's nice, but it's nothing flashy as such. So, next thing I want to go on to is, of course, the hot topic of debate lately is the artifacts. So, we have a look and see here, shall we? Oh my, this is a nasty one, this is. Right, okay, so, in fact, for this one, I'm going to actually have a look at the uh, bit. If you're going to play practice for example you can have a little look and see but I'll read it out. Artifacts have been added to the Heroes of the Storm and can now be used to modify a hero's starting stats prior to queuing for a match in any game mode. Reach player level 15 to unlock the ability to purchase artifacts and artifact slots using gold. So here we go. So I haven't purchased any yet. I haven't delved into that. Luckily I'm level 30 plus so if you're level 30 plus you get 75,000 gold since this patch and I have 5,500 gold and I won 
uh, yeah, 40 gold for the late last game that I played, the first game I played since I came, came on with Muradin. I'm going to go into more detail on the heroes as well a bit later. But as you can see here, your artifacts, so you can increase health, damage, grant shields. So that's your artifact. There's um, three different gem types as such. So, for example, uh, this is your gem slot. So your artifacts, rather. Three artifact slots you can put on your hero before you start your game. So you've got your gem slot got your relics slot and you got your trinket slot so each one has different sort of um, properties to it and that's up to you how you want to play with that this might create a bit more sort of diversity with heroes or it actually might pinhole heroes down a certain road so if you start a game and you've gone into damage as a tassadar but it turns out that the enemy team for example have like really heavy damage and you know that you need to switch back into healing those gems that you put towards damage are kind of screwed because you're either going to go all out into damage or you're going to go into healing past that point and be kind of a nerfed Tassadar compared to if you knew what you was coming up against and then you would just put your points in healing. So, mm, I don't like the idea of it, but yeah, I know a lot of people don't like it and I'll get into that in another video, no doubt. Uh, we'll go into that a bit more detail. So, yes. Um, the artifact ranks. Okay, let's have a look at this, shall we? Uh there we go. So as you can see, you can increase the stats of each artifact. But of course, this is going to cost gold to increase. And gold is time, and time is money, and blah, blah, blah. You get the point. This is a time. Gold sink is both of them. It's a sink of your time. It's a sink of gold. It's a way for Blizzard to basically get players to spend gold and other things. Or perhaps, for example, if they wanted to play a hero, they might actually buy that hero with real money. Because you can't buy artifacts, I think, with gold, but you'd buy the heroes with money and then the artifacts you'd buy with gold. So that's what they're probably trying to coerce you into doing. So, yeah, let's have a little look here. Uh, additional ranks, they can all be purchased. The gold cost increases. 100 gold for each rank purchased after the first. So rank 2 costs 200 gold, rank 3 costs 300 gold, and so on. So it's going to get really pricey. I'm sure people have actually done all the maths and stuff like this, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to cost a lot. So put it that way. You can always look up into that in more detail. Just check the forums. I'm sure you'll find enough detail on that. Um... Was that uh, all tech alphas? Yeah, that was it. Like you get seventy-five thousand gold for thirty plus, or level twenty to twenty-nine is thirty-five thousand gold, and level five to nineteen is ten thousand gold to play with. Now, one of the theories was, as I heard about, is what you could do is just you, if you really wanted to, you could just hold on to all of that gold, and then eventually all of this stuff, as Blizzard normally put in, are really expensive to start off with, and eventually it probably gets dropped down in price, not by much, but it might get dropped down in price. So if you really, really wanted to min-max your gold, and um, sort of not spend anything do it super hardcore then you could potentially save yourself you know a fair bit of gold just waiting for stuff to go down in price but i wouldn't worry too much about it it is alpha it's there to be played with okay so hero levels and rewards let's have a little look here let's, let's go back i will actually bring up the page here as well so you can have a little look you can always pause the video so if you wanted to see anything that I haven't gone over, so I, like I say, I'll just sort of show you a few bits here and there. Feel free to pause on certain moments, because there's a lot of notes, and I would just be wasting a lot of people's time if I read out all of this. So I'm just going over the majority of main things. There you go. So there's your hero changes or hero levels and rewards. So we're going to go back into this, have a little nice look and see. So here we have your portrait at the top right, and this is all being reworked. Uh, so we'll have a little look and see, shall we? Moradin, strangely enough, for some people it might seem that strange, is actually my most played hero. <sighs> yeah, I like the little guy, and this patch has made him even better, so it's pretty good. He wasn't that great before, but now he's just, yeah, it's good stuff. So, um, yeah, hero levels and rewards. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so... Experience points earned by playing matches in cooperative and for all versus modes count towards player level and hero level progress alike. So you can play in cooperative or versus, say for example with Moradin, and in either of those modes you'll get experience. So that's my first game that I've played since this patch, and boom, you can see that's the experience I got for one win. That was a 15 minute game, that's about 70,000 odd experience as you can see, so you know, probably about yeah, five, six, five, six, seven, eight 
Well, <laughs> keep going up in numbers before I can level up to level four, five. Level four is where you basically get past all the horrible gateway parts, which I really disagree with, and we'll go into more detail on that. You can see all the other heroes that I've played, and it gives you an idea to the ones that are level one. So those little guys there are basically going to be screwed because they haven't even got a heroic second heroic ability active for them, so that sucks. So there you go. Um, all heroes begin at level 1 and can be individually leveled up to a maximum of level 10 as you can see so as you go through these level increases as you level up you get access to new things and eventually you get your access to master skin so I will mention just what those things are don't actually have it down on here but I will go over it again in a second so you start off as level 1, level 2, you get your heroic ability, level 3, advanced talents, level so basically you get you unlock 6 extra talents or something like that. At level 4 you get all of your talents. So that's the main one you want to get with your heroes. And then after that point it's cosmetic, which is what it should always be. It should always be cosmetic. Let me know what you think. Hero level 5, so gold 500, hero level 6, hero portrait mount variation, so hero level 7 skin variation. Level 8, skin variation, level 9, master portrait and mount variation, and level 10, master skin, which you, I think, have to buy with gold. So that's actually a bit of a joke in itself. Okay, so, okay, let's have a look at the talents and heroic abilities. Talents are no longer unlocked all at once by reaching player level 8 with the leveling system, so we did have it really easy before, and now you're going to have to, like, play through all of these heroes to unlock the talents, which is just mental. Uh, instead, heroic abilities and talents are now unlocked on a per hero basis by playing and leveling up each hero individually. So at level 1, the hero now starts with two talents available at each tier of in-game talent selection and one heroic ability. The hero's second... Uh, yeah, I've gone over this stuff, so basically you just have to unlock access to talents and heroic abilities. It's not good. Um, hero Master Portraits. Uh, basic hero portraits are now unlocked by achieving level 6 with each hero. So master portraits have now been added to the game, so you can get those at your level 9. Uh, as you can see, I've still got Malfiore in here, and that's basically because I haven't switched. The only access to the only portrait I have access to is this first one here, and I because I haven't clicked on it, it hasn't changed, and I'm not going to change. So press cancel to keep your original portrait, so I'm still Malfiore in. Well, there it is. Uh, yeah, the master skins, so these have been added, and they're a good way to show off how powerful you are, or how good you are, or how experienced you are, would probably be the better word for it. So, um, mm. these can be purchased apparently for 10,000 gold each. Ooh, that's quite a bit, so let's have a look at one of the master skins, actually. Give you an idea. Master. When it loads up. Master Stitches, that's the boy. It's a bit slow to load, as you can see. It will come up eventually, I hope. But as I'm doing this, uh, let's have a look here. So, unlock the ability to purchase a hero's master skin by reaching level 10 with that hero. They can be uh, purchased for 10,000 gold, and just like any other skin, each hero's master skin comes with two variations, which can be used to further customize that hero appearance in-game. So you get this one, and then two variations on top of it. I quite like the first one regardless. So he just looks... Basically the master skins add like a crown, shoulders and maybe a bit more flash to your weapons. So the stitches one is pretty awesome to be honest. And it's a good way to show it off but... Yeah, you have to pay 10,000 gold for that one. Just for that skin. Even though you've got to level 10 that should kind of be the reward in itself. You've actually got to pay. You've got to get that and then you've got to pay. So it's, it's a bit harsh that. Okay, so player profile. Let's go back to my profile. Here you can see hero progress rewards, so we'll go over this. Uh, many aspects of the player profile have been reworked. Several tabs have been added to the left hand side, which you can see, which can be used to navigate the player profile. You've got your hero progress that tracks experience points, hero levels, and rewards earned by playing games and leveling up each hero. So, Muradin, you know, shows a level 4, gives you obviously the next thing to aim for is gold 500, level 5, and so on and so on. So, you can sort of see, you're like, hmm, okay, well, Muradin's good. He's level 4 now. I've got access to everything he needs, so I'm going to work on the heroes that are level 1, so I need to start playing Rega, I need to start playing Abafa, Ufa and such and such. That way I can get all of those heroes up to level 4. You're basically going to want every hero up to level 4 if this, you know, change stays, which I hope it doesn't, but uh, I think it's going to be here for a while, so if you're, 
you know, into Heroes of the Storm, where you're currently playing, you're going to want to get every hero up to level 4, basically, just so you can actually enjoy them properly. Ah, yes, here we go. So what was I looking at? Okay, so you got your rewards. These can be few, used to few which level in... Uh, can be used to few which leveling system rewards have been have already been earned and which are yet to be unlocked so as you can see I'm already quite high level so I've got access to all of these ones uh, I'm level 32 at the moment so once I get level 35 I can look forward to another 3000 gold yay and then pff, that's about it apparently so yay they need to work on that one that's for sure and then you've got your daily quests so I've got quite a few to do as you can see select this tab to keep an eye on your daily quests which are available for completion and the profile summary and uh, the match history tabs have been disabled during tech alpha so testing so unfortunately we haven't got access to those yet um, end of game I can actually show you this because I might be able to slip it into the video if I'm editing this, which I probably am going to be, you're probably looking at it right now, to be quite frank with you. And, uh, yeah, I just recorded, because I couldn't at the time do this voiceover, but whatever. Um, yeah, I recorded, as you can see on the screen, hopefully right now, uh, a game that I played with Muradin. Basically, we won that game. I got 40 gold for it, as you can see. It tells you my current hero level. It will tell you basically what I'm aiming for in that you know, the, the the actual hero level, so he's 4, he's aiming for level 5, he's going to get 500 gold, I think it should show up. And it shows 30, level 32, which is my player level. Okay, so you can have a little look at that. You can also access the stats, but you can't see that because I don't show it in this video. But it's just basically the same as the end of the game. Once it comes up, it just shows you, oh, you got this many kills, you collected this many coins, your team got this much experience, their team got that much experience, and that's about it. So, there you go, that's the end of game stuff, just listing quests, rewards, all that. Hero select, so, okay, let's go back here. Okay, uh, you can select your heroes, they can be purchased directly from the hero select screen, so you go into Regar, you can see his skins, which you can choose, and you can purchase these, as you can see, as mentioned. The green one. Whoa. And then you can have a look at the talents. And it it works in real time. Because if I was to look at Muradin, for example. Muradin. And look at the talents. You can see what access can to all of them. You? Because he's currently level 4. Whereas, you know, Kerrigan. Who I, I don't know what level I, I am with her. But I'm not level 4. You can see that I've only got access to the first two tiers. On each talent tree. Or tier level of talents. So, yeah. It's, it gives you an idea of what you get, though. So you can still read the details, it's just... Mm, I don't like that change. <laughs> okay, so earning gold. Gold is now awarded upon completing matches in cooperative and versus game modes. Each cooperative mode win now awards 10 gold. And versus matches now grant 10 gold per loss and 40 gold per win. Which is nowhere near enough. 100 gold per win, 50 gold per loss. 50-50, I'd say. So half, if you lose, you still get half of what the winning team gets. That's not, that's half. That's not exactly much, but it's enough to say, okay, that game we lost, it was a bit horrible to play, but I got something for it at least. Getting 10 gold for a loss and f even 40 gold for Let's a win, it isn't very incentivizing. Um, daily quests, uh, these can now be completed in cooperative mode. All daily quests now award 200 gold upon completion, but no longer grant experience points. This is basically a nerf. You get less gold for it, you don't get experience points, it doesn't build up towards gold that you get from leveling up your player. But at least you can do it in cooperative mode, so that's something. But again, they're so easy to do, because you just play. You don't have to win with a lot of these quests. If I have a look at them, it will just say, play two games, play two games, play two games. So I could lose those games and still do fine in the versus game, so I don't actually have to win to get them, so it's not really much pressure. Uh, the radial ping men menu, I just wanted to mention this, it's been ac you can access it by pressing G or the Alt key and holding down the left mouse button, it's re received uh, several improvements. The main one I was interested in, I haven't got to test this, I actually forgot to test it whilst I was in that game, is mouse cursor. The mouse cursor now remains visible on screen while you using the radial ping menu and a line is now drawn from the center point of the menu to the cursor. Now I was curious about that, I wish I had a look at it now, but um, 
I'll obviously get back to it in a future video. And if you know, then feel free to post down a comment. But I was curious whether you could say, for example, draw. Say this is the mini map here, this little box here with the free daily quest in it. And, you know, that's a fort up there. And the golem is down here, for example. If I sort of held down G and dragged it down, would that show a line to my allies? If that isn't in at the moment, would you like to see something like that? It would obviously be spammed and abused, but in proper team matchups where you're playing with friends, obviously you can have fun with it. But if you're playing in a more pro setup and you're all being hardcore tryharders and you want to win, something like that to give very clear indications as to where you're going. So, Muradin, you know, you're going in this line, this exact line. Your allies can see that rather than just pinging there. You might want to sort of like show that you're going around this way to get to it rather than this way, if you know what I mean. Okay, so uh, these are more just maintenance notes that I wanted to highlight, really. So, infrastructure, there's been several changes to improve overall responsiveness during gameplay. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is. Ah, what was it? I think I wrote it down on something. Oh, there we go. Uh, Blizzard have apparently reversed uh, the forced input lag or removed it rather so better quality of life for us all I guess because um, yeah there was a forced input lag which a lot of players were noticing not everyone will notice but uh, this means that you know the input lag would be forced at 200 ms so that way anyone who's got a bad connection is going to stand more of a chance against someone who's got a super computer super connection and yada 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 it's not a great thing, especially in this day and age where a lot of people can get great connections. And I totally understand not everyone can, so I don't mind too much having a forced input lag as long as it's not that high because, you know, 200 ms plus and stuff like that, it's not really fun to play with. Right, okay, so let's go on to movement. You, uh, you can press and hold the right mouse button in game to continually move a hero in the direction of the cursor and make spam clicking a finger to pass. Personally, I like to spam click. Uh, rejoin. The game camera will now recenter on the player's hero upon rejoining the game in progress. And voiceover is no longer triggered in game when a player times out due to connection issues. So I wonder if that Blackheart's Bay narrator goes, Aha! Looks like a player's left the fight. He doesn't sound like that at all, but you know, that was getting pretty annoying. So I wonder if that's what that's referring to. Of course, you have the shop. That refers to the new hero. So let's have a look at the shop. There he is, Regar. So yeah, Regar has been added to the Heroes of the Storm shop. Uh, Iron Claw Regar. So we look at the skins. There he is. Yeah, he's been added. You've got the Master skins. And the Master skins have been added to Abatha, Arthas, Diablo, Falstad. Uh, in fact, yeah, as I did it before, I could just look it up. Uh, do, 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 master... Nope. I have to do it in the skins bit, of course, because I'm talking about skins. That would make sense, right? And it needs to be master, not naster. There you go. So you can see the master ones. So that's been added for Abafer, Arthas, Diablo, Falstad, Illidan, Kerrigan, Lily, Moradin, Rega, Sonya, Stitches, Tassadar, Taranda, and Ufa, Fala, and Sigara. Who's the last one? Who's on this page? There they are. It's quite a few, actually. Nice. Alrighty, so you got your bundle packs. Let's have a look at these. Hmm. I was curious about this because I bought the Heroes Variety Bundle Pack and I'm pretty sure that came with nine heroes, but now... I've... missing one. So you got... hang on. Well, I'll just mention this. You got the Iron Claw Regar Bundle, which has been added. All previously uh, available bundle packs have been removed from the shop and replaced by the following. So you got the... Um, hang on a second. You got... The Assassin Bundle, Warrior Bundle, Support Bundle, Beatdown Bundle, Heavy Hitters Bundle, and Heroes of the Light Bundle. So basically, your Assassin is free heroes there, Assassins, free Warriors, free Supports, and then the Beatdown, Heavy Hitters, and Heroes of the Light are basically a combination of uh, the Assassin, Warrior, and Support Bundles. So, one thing to note here is I've got the Warrior Bundle. This is owned. Mil I. And I've got the Heroes of Light bundle. But that's only six heroes. I had nine heroes, I'm pretty sure. For example, this one, Faustad, Tychus, Kerrigan. It doesn't say I own this anymore. So I'm not sure whether Blizzard ripped me off there or something, because I'm missing that now. So I'm not sure if other players have this, if it's a bug, whether it's intended. Either way, I'm three heroes short, so not too chuffed about that. Okay, so again, little maintenance notes here. Art. 
Many in-game hero and skin portraits have received visual improvements. So, dance animations have been added for the following. Abafur, Reyna and his commander Reyna skins. Just little, very little touches. Facial animations, even for Reyna and Ufa. So maybe when Ufa talks, he won't look so robotic. Uh, implemented several visual effects as well for Death Screen's Illidan's Metamorphosis. Heroic ability, Ronin's, uh, Sarah Tool's basic, Ronin's. Uh, basic abilities and Sonya's Ariat's crater heroic ability talent. So really tiny things have even been touched up here. So it's a big patch. You got your sound changes and so new music has been added throughout the game. New ping sounds have been added for map events and added a low health notification sound. So get out. Something like that will come up when you're basically about to die. Get back and heal. Design and gameplay. So general heroes have been made easier to left and right click on. I feel like oh, I can switch back to the uh, page here just so you can actually have a read here. I won't be able to go over all of this. Again, a link to this page will be up there for you so you can see all of the things I'm going over. But I'm just pretty much focusing on the things that actually stand out to me and I think you need to find out about. So, yeah, we're round about here. So, designing gameplay. You got your heroes have been added, uh, made easier to left and right click on. This does not affect a hero's width in terms of gameplay interaction, such as skill shots or pay, path in collision. Uh, the amount of it, so that's interesting. Like they're easy to click on, but it doesn't affect things. I never had that big a deal clicking on them, but I did have a deal actually finding out where the cursor is, and I'm sure a lot of other people did. I think they improved that though. Uh, the amount of in-game experience required to reach levels 2 to 9 has been increased by approximately 6%. That's big information for you out there. That's just starting the Heroes of the Storm. That's going to rock your world, that extra 6%. you got the underdog bonus. The amount of XP received from Hero Takedowns is now more granular. So this will have less impact during close games. This is a much better thing. The underdog bonus is not a good thing in my... I, I mean, I like it to some degree, but it needs to be minimal. Because one thing I don't like is, for example, your team, you play well, you cooperate, you cooperate, you communicate, and you do a fantastic job for 20 minutes, and you're like two levels ahead of the enemy team, and then the enemy team just have a really good team fight in that next encounter that you have. Like one of your allies does something stupid, gets the rest of you killed, basically, from his stupid actions, and then boom, they're now the same level as you. They're now level 22, whereas you were 22 and they were 20 after one fight, even though you've been doing really well for that last 20 minutes or whatever it might be. So, yeah, they need to get that. There needs to be the underground underdog bonus, but uh, it needs to be minimal, so that's fine. Uh, battlegrounds, the core, which is the palace, the health now scales throughout the game, so splash damage from it, re radius increased from 1.5 to 2, just little things there, but the uh, health scaling is interesting. I'm not see how that works. Maybe you can nuke it really early on in the game, I don't know. Does that mean it has a lot less health at the start? I guess it does. Um, talents, general. With the addition of artifacts, the following generic talents have been removed. Minion killer, path of the assassin. So, uh, path of the warrior and path of the wizards. Ah, uh, here's the things. So, I want to mention this just in case anyone's really listening to the audio as well. And, uh, I'll go over this. I'll just get a chug of water. That's a lot of talking, I'm telling you. I think you know, you're listening. Right, okay, I'm going to read from here still, even though it's right in front of me on the screen. Uh, the new talent, level 1, Season Marksman. Grants plus 1 a basic attack damage permanently for every 5 minions killed. This effect stacks. Only minions damaged by basic attacks within moments of their death will count towards this bonus. So that's potentially very good. Uh, think of that in the same sense as the Witch Doctor. Uh, you know, he gets these... Uh, voodoo ritual I believe so you know you that's quite potentially a big buff but it means that you have to be in lanes and killing minions and I still don't think that's part of the I mean it happens in the game but I don't think it's part of a competitive game really you're not mm, killing minions I don't think Blizzard want to go down that road either they want to keep that a small part of the game you don't want to be like League of Legends or uh, Dota in that sense where you're last hitting or focusing too much on the minions because then you just may as well sit in lane and not have any brawls in the battlegrounds. Okay, so new talent as well. Conjurer's Pursuit. Gather free regeneration glows to permanently gain 0.25 mana regeneration. This affects stacks, so this is really good for support. So think of it, if you were Diablo and you used to get the regeneration health globes, so you could, you know, you could build up your stack of health 
regeneration. We'll think Tassadar can now do this, Ufa can now do this to build up their mana. So this is really good for those kind of support heroes. Uh, the new talent, Scouting Drone, level 1. Places a flying drone at the target location which reveals a large area and any cloaked heroes around it for 60 seconds. This drone can now be seen and destroyed by enemies. So think of that as like a ward from League of Legends. That's not a bad thing. It's interesting, it's curious, and at least it can be seen and destroyed. That adds more to gameplay. Uh, new talent, level 4. Gathering power, passively grants 8% ability power so each hero takedown uh, grants an additional two ability power two percent ability power up to a maximum of 12 percent this bonus is lost on death so mm, i wonder if that that means eight percent and then you can build it up to 20 percent uh, this is obviously very good for ap ability power heroes that have a good strong support because if you are if a lot of your abilities are where your majority of your damage comes from. For example, even like Nova, a hero like Nova would do well with this, but she does die easily. So she had like strong support and people focusing on keeping her alive. This could be a very powerful talent for someone like Nova. Just to give you an idea. So this is my idea of just going, let me know what you think so far. I think the video is definitely going quite long right now, but this patch is freaking huge. Future videos and stuff like that will be a lot shorter because there won't be that much to talk about and I can give more information regarding my opinions but that's what I'm doing, I'm going over the stuff, telling you what you need to know and basically anything I think I can add on top of it. Okay, so you got your block has been moved from level 7 to 1. I think these things you can just read, to be quite frank, so I'll literally just put this, where is it? So a load of um, the current abilities and talents have been moved left, right and centre and some of them have been changed, such as Spell Shield upon taking ability damage uh, now gains a shield that reduces all ability damage taken by 50% for 2 seconds. This can only occur once every 30 seconds. Arguably a buff or a nerf, hard to say. I guess if you've been out of action, because before you could just build up the stacks if you haven't been in action, so you could go kill mercenaries, creeps and stuff like that, and then boom, you, you're immune to the next 2 spell shots. Not so much anymore. So I guess it's a bit of a nerf in a sense. That's how I would look at it. Okay, so moving on. Alright, these are basically the hero changes. I wanted to have a quick mention of these. Again, I'm going to try to keep it short. Feel free to pause the video or read because I'm going to stay on this page for now. Not swapping back to uh, this one. So there you go. Admire Rega in all his glory. I'm not sure if I'm coming back to this page. This is the beauty. I can just switch back to this. You're seeing what I'm seeing. Although, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Hmm the meta. Okay, so you got the background information for ABBA first. So, okay, I've made little notes here just to sort of shorten down. So feel free to read what it says on the screen. And um, I'm just going to mention the sort of gist of each thing. So Abafa, he's got new talents to... Oh, I wrote terribly though, my handwriting. I did this in bed last night. It's just like... Uh, uh, <laughs> I do go off, don't I? So he's got new talents to buff damage on Q his stab ability and W spike burst. So Arthas keep an eye on him so Arthas uh, they just basically move the talent death touch that's about it so nothing special for him for Brightwing uh, fairy dragon yeah fairy dragons so basically a uh, higher quality of life talent changes for her and a slight nerf to soothe and miss, but otherwise she's got more sort of ease with the phase shift. Diablo, okay, so the talents have been moved and removed drastically over the tiers. Otherwise buffs to pretty much his talent damage on W and E, which is his fire stomp and his overpower. Uh, the ETC, so the rock god. Um, I wanted to mention this is new talent, level 13. So any new talents, I'm definitely going to mention those. Uh, rocking out. Increases the duration of Rockstar from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. and gives minions the full bonus. So again, another thing that's boosting staying in lane or working with minions. I'm not sure how much I like that. I don't know whether that's the direction Blizzard are heading towards. Maybe we will go in towards last hits. You never freaking know. Especially with all these artifact changes and such. Um, so... This, I put lane pusher here, question mark. You know, is that what they're heading towards? Focusing players in lanes? Is that he's going to be his job? I don't think so, but it seems weird. Otherwise, he's just had talents moved across the tiers. Gazlo, minion killer talent has been removed. That's about it. Illidan, oh yes. I've got a reason to break out that Shando skin that I bought for him, Shando Illidan. I bought that a while ago, and then I started playing him, and I was like, oh. 
I guess I can't really use this skin because he's not very good. So um, yeah, this is the first lot of buffs and hopefully he maybe gets a few more buffs down the line because I haven't had a chance to play with him but I'm not sure if this is going to be enough even though there have been a lot of buffs towards him. So talents are being moved up tiers, huge buffs all around for t abilities and talents. Expect more Illidans basically is one of the notes I made and it's time to break out my Shallad Shando Illidan skin. Yes, it is freaking awesome and uh, obviously it costs money but that was money I was willing to put down because Illidan is just amazing and Shando seriously just check check that skin out especially the color variations of it as well okay so Kerrigan the Queen of Blades so she's got a new talent it's aggressive defense uh, increases shield amounts generated by using basic abilities from 20% to 30% so this encourages her as more of an initiator and tankiness uh, a new talent for Ravage which is a level 7 adaption Ravage can now be used to jar oh, yeah these change I'm gonna mention both of them clean talent uh, clean clean kill talent uh, moved from level 7 to 4 so the mana refund is increased from 75% to 100% if the target is killed by Ravage so you can basically hop on minions if you can one shot them one by one it looks quite fun uh, new talent uh, level 7 adaption Ravage can now be used to jump to allies does not deal damage and using Ravage on an ally reduces its cooldown duration by 50% so these talents are being moved around and there's definitely good buffs overall. There's a lot more fun to her, I think. These are the notes I made. She's going to be more tactical, there's going to be more focus on teamwork with her, and she's going to be less predictable. Because my biggest issue with Kerrigan is I found her kind of boring. She like, she goes in there, she initiates, she jumps in, she pulls him in, uses a sort of spike ability, and then that's kind of it and she auto attacks until she can kind of do that sort of thing again now it's going to be a bit more like oh is she going to pull back is she going to jump back onto an ally why is he moving close to Kerrigan there is he going to help her out is she planning to go for this guy over here with some teamwork there it makes it more interesting and those kind of changes really voice your opinions on those one we want to see more changes like that uh, Lily Lily uh, the world wanderer hmm okay so Talents have been removed and slight nerfs to reduce the amount of spam that she puts out. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that, apparently, I put. I don't know why I put that. Why did I put good luck with that? I don't know. You work it out. Uh, hmm. I was never a big fan of Lily, to be honest. It's like the easiest healer in the game, and... Yeah, she was really powerful for a long time. So, she's got a few extra nerfs to sort of keep her down a touch so that's nice one of the strange things actually I already went over Brightwing and he had a slight nerf to Suvin Mist but nothing that major that was just a heroic ability Suvin Mist can't be used when using heroic abilities yeah it is a bit of a nerf I guess but I still think the healing on Brightwing is probably still going to be out of control um, as for Malfurion okay hardened focus talent added at level 16 mm, go him that's about it for him. So Moradin, the Mountain King. Okay, follow through talent. Oh, this boy. He's my main mo he's my main boy. He's my main man. Moradin. So follow through talent added at level seven and Syrian attacks talent has been removed. Yeah, I'm not sure what Syrian attacks was doing on there. He was never really much of a DPS or so. That was a bizarre talent to have on him. Obviously, there's a lot to read there, so feel free to do so. But my short notes for him are there's a lot of buffs to the abilities and talents. So that's what Blizzard seemed to be aiming with this hero, is to make him more active and to kick more ass. So that's what I liked about him. Also, I love the Haymaker, although Avatar still seems like the smarter choice to take, generally, especially for Pugs. But I suppose if you had a, like, an organized team that you could use Haymaker with, it could be awesome. Still hard to resist Haymaker, isn't it? Uh, it's just great to have a reason to play him again, is the other note that I made, which, like I say, he's the first hero. He's my most played hero anyway, but it's just, there's even more reason to play him now, because he's just, a lot of this stuff just makes him get into the fight more, do more in the fights. It's good to see. Murky, ooh, a lot of changes for this boy. Uh, the main one I wanted to mention was Assault Egg, apparently, according to this, which I can't seem to find. Is that, where the hell did I, unless that's been changed, no. Assault Egg, so no longer reduces the cooldown for Spawn Egg, now increases Murky's mount and movement speed by 20% for five seconds after respawning. 
don't know why I highlighted those two particularly. I guess there was some sort of interest there. Hmm, no longer reduces the cooldown. Yeah. Anyway, basically, um, they removed a lot of tears, a lot of talents and such from Murky. Uh, it's kind of like a mixed buff and a nerf to Pufferfish, his W ability. It's harder to kill, but it's got more... Well, put it this way, the, but the pros of it is that it's harder to kill now. It's got potentially more... I haven't actually been able to play around with it much, but I guess it's got more potential for late game damage. So it's basically more of a nerf to its effectiveness in the early game, but late game it could potentially do more damage. However, it's got a larger cooldown, and it's also got a much shorter sort of radius, so you've got to be much closer to the target you're chucking it at, so you can't really chuck it out of range very easily. So, um, mm, probably... It's like a buff and a nerf. It's hard to say where to put it. It depends how you play him. You can't spam with him as much, basically. But if you do manage to get those puffer fishes off, they will do the job. So that's the idea with it. And the R, his heroic ability, March of the Murlocs, looks like it's been nerfed because it's it's been changed, I guess is another way to put it, to encourage team fighting because uh, it looks like... Um, where are we? So it now only deals 50% damage to structures. That's half the damage to structures. But the slow amount has been increased from 10% to 15% and maximum slow amount increased from 70% to 90%. So basically it looks like Blizzard are trying to reduce the chance of Murky's just sitting in the back of your base uh, using March of the Murlocs and they want you to maybe use it in team fights instead just to slow down the enemy because it does basically cripple them completely. If you get Mar March of the Murlocs on you, you can't move and you're basically going to be able to move even less now. So maybe that's their motivation with that and strangely enough even Octograb got a bit nerfed with the uh, cooldown being increased so interesting changes there for Murky I'd say overall nerfs though okay and the Zebo uh, mercenary lord talent added at level 7 voodoo ritual talent so trait uh, new talent there at level 16 specialized toxin increases the damage voodoo ritual deals to enemy heroes by 200% that's a pretty big deal that's uh, not bad at all. It's like a sw slight switch around for him and a, a little buff, I'd say, for Nazebo. Nothing too special, though. Okay, so for Nova, well, I said nerfs, but nothing major. Just a talent you don't care about being removed or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, Onslaught of the Storm has been removed. I can't remember what Onslaught of the Storm does. What was Onslaught of the Storm? That's a shame. I'm not going to bother looking it up now. You can shout at me afterwards when I've made this video. But uh, Fury of the Storm has been added. That was strange. Yeah, that was strange. Fury of the Storm. That's the one where your attacks... B She's not really an auto-attacker. So that was it. That was my issue there, really. Was uh, Fury of the Storm. Why has that been added? Because she's more about staying invisible as much as possible and then burst damaging and then going back to being invisible. She's not really just standing in a lane going bang, bang, bang. I don't really get that change. I don't think that's a good change, but hey, it's a change. Stitches. Rewind talent has been removed. That is unfortunate. I'm not too happy about that change, but that's all that's happened to him, so that's pretty good because he's a lot of fun to play, so I don't really want to get him fervently nerfed. But yeah, rewind, obviously, getting double hooks and stuff like that, you know, is a lot of fun to play around with there. So it's not bad, little rewind there. It's gone now, though, so let it go, let it go. you got Tassadar, Psionic Storm, W, Psy Infusion Talent has been moved from level 4 to 1. Don't know why that was so highly mentioned by me here, but that was about it for him. I've got to do these notes a bit better. This is all practice. So, obviously this video is still going on quite long, so anything you have an issue with in this video, feel free to let me know. Um, I, cause I, there's so many changes though, it's hard to say. There's still some more to go over, so this is still going to run over. But Tychus, new talent. Level 4, Spray and Pray. Increases overkill cast range and maximum attack range by 1. So this is interesting. Let's get a... The way I see this, with the changes with Tychus, is slight switch up. Uh, his Q is going to be easier to use, but potentially there's going to be less damage because the slow amount, the lead ta rain talent has been, um, the slow amount has been reduced from 40% to 20%, and duration reduced from 3 to 1.5 seconds. So obviously, you know, when you're using that talent on people with your Q, 
your allies can do lots of damage because they can keep up with the opponent and such and such. So it's potentially a nerf to his damage, but you know, it seems like Blizzard are pretty much happy with where he is. Um, Tyriol, so Elduin's Might. Damage previously caused by teleporting to and or the expi expiration of the sword has been removed. So overall the changes for him looks like initial damage, initial ability damage has been increased for both his Q and E, which is Elduin's Might and Smite. Huh. But the Q loses its sort of um, damage when he activates it again. Oh, Tyrande. Uh, she's like on the same league as Moradin to me, if not slightly higher potentially. She's a fascinating one. Ever since I got access to Heroes of the Storm, she's fascinated me because I was like, I don't get this hero. She doesn't seem to fit any role whatsoever. And that's been made clear because there's a lot of changes. A lot of changes to her. And I'm going to take another chug of water for this one. Okay. So, Tyrande. Mm. Hunter's Mark. Trait. New Talent. Level 1. Ranger's Mark. Reduces the cooldown for Hunter's Mark by 8 seconds. New Talent. Level 13. Persian Mark. Hunter's Mark can now be cast in structures. Basic attacks against a Mark structure. Drain 1 ammunition. Potentially interesting there. I mean... Should I mention all of these changes? I think that's too much to mention. I think if you want to read them, then feel free to read them. I'm just going to bring down to the next bit. There you go. You can have a good little look there. Essentially, what I was going to say is... Um, these changes, overall, are really going to add extra depth to Tyrande. It's going to make her go down many different paths, potentially. It gives, her, it gives players more options when playing her. You know, to vary their playstyle, and it's good. Basically, the changes are good. They really mix it up. She was already kind of in a strange place before, and now I think she's in a stranger place, but in a good way, because she just got so much potential that so many different playstyles you can get out of her. You know, Siege or Damager or Support, and all these kind of things. She's a pretty cool hero. I think she's super underrated. Ufa, Holy Radiance, width reduced from three to two point five. Yeah. So you got the Toronto changes and then you go to Ufa there. Hmm. Fala. So Strafe. Straf. I think Strafe, to be honest. So the trigger happy talent has been removed. Hmm. But a new talent, Vengeance. Strafe fires penetrating bolts in a straight line. So, hmm. I think. I can't remember what the trigger happy talent was, but I'm pretty sure that was uh, one that boosted the Strafe. And if that's the one I think it was, it is pretty broken, which made Fala do loads of damage in that latest patch. She was very powerful, at least in the pug games. And, uh, yeah, I think people will be sad to see that gone, but, um, she's still pretty good, I reckon. Zagara, Bainin Barrage, Q ability. So Bainins have been given a little more leeway to navigate around corners and hydralisks. They move 10% uh, faster. So generally just improvements to the artificial intelligence for Zagara's abilities, essentially. Making her a little less useless. So Bainins don't underperform as such. I know people were mentioning that, so I'm just curious how they managed to perform that. A little more leeway to navigate around corners. What's the programming behind that? Hmm quite curious. Serator. Okay, so Cleave. Let's have a look here, down at the Dark Prelates. Uh, Cleave. Q. New talent, level 16 from the Shadows. Cleave deals 30% more damage when used while Serator is cloaked. A good initiator, but once I start fighting, generally I stay in it. But then again, that might synergize quite well with, um, I can't remember what the talent's called, but um, the, it's an E-Blink talent. It might even be the Forpal Blade one. That's down there. Uh, you you can uh, obviously blink back to where you attacked from in the first place. Or something like that. So where you blink to. You can blink back to where you originally were. So good for little snipes. Uh, talents moved across the tiers for Serator. R is less powerful at level 10? Question mark. But better at level 20. So this is something I haven't actually discovered yet. But Shadow Assault. The 15% lifesteal on the base heroic ability has been removed. Nerism Fury. Lifesteal increased from 15% to 30%. So those are two different ones. Hmm. Make of that what you will. Okay. And that's the last of those heroes. Woo. Managed to get through that. That's a lot of changes. The rest of these are just general fixes. So feel free to look at the video. 
and have a little read, but I'll just mention a couple of the bits, which was the art. Uh, I don't know why I've got those highlighted. Oh, yeah. Just straight. I think when you get to this point, this is these are kind of funny changes. These are basically like exploitive things and uh, things that were kind of wrong with the game in a funny way that have been changed. The graphic effects surrounding Seratal's side blades on the Hero Select screen no longer appear misaligned while searching for a match. Just little strange things. Taronda now loads her bow at an angle that is more consistent with the flight path of her basic attacks. You know, little touches makes it nice. I like it. Just little touch-ups I said here, bug fixes, uh, UI, but the main one is the Battlegrounds. So yeah, the user interface, just improvements there. Battlegrounds, treasure chests on Blackheart's Bay no longer visibly persists through the fog of war, nor on the minimap after they are destroyed. This was definitely an annoying bug for a lot of players, so it's good to see that change. Let's move on to the heroes and talents, finally. Can I go back one more step? Can I catch... Oh my goodness, there's quite a lot there. Okay, we'll just sit that there. You can read that, right? This is this goes into 1080p. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's really not working with me there. We'll sit it out here for now. So, heroes and talents. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <sighs> not sure whether to read all of these out. Ah, uh, okay, I will read these out because if you're at this point in the video and you're still watching, you're just going to carry on watching. So, yeah, heroes and talents. These are like I say, these are the kind of like the changes to things where, you know, the game had a few bugs, issues, the exploitive kind of funny things that you could, you know, ha that could happen in the game. So let's go over it. Abathur's Symbiote. Oh, well, this one. Not Some of them are less funny than others. I should really highlight the ones I like the most, I suppose, in future. Overhead graphic effect is no longer visible through line of sight blockers. Abathur's symbi symbiote abilities can no longer continue to be cast when a hero under the effects of symbiote becomes trapped by Sigara's Devour and more. Brightwing's polymorph ability no longer occasionally causes the target to become invisible. I like that. Diablo's shadow, shadow charge and fire stomp abilities now appropriately cause shielded heroes to dismount. So again, that's not so funny. A foul stats and boomerang explosion no longer occasionally occurs in a separate location, uh, separate from the hammer when it is activated. I noticed that as well. Didn't know that was how it's supposed to work, or whether it was lag or something like that. It didn't feel like it was connecting very well. Illidan will no, now appropriately issue an attack order on an enemy after using dive on the target. Illidan will no longer follow his target to the opposing altar after using a hunt on a hero that dies before impact. I like that. So he just keeps chasing and goes boom, suicide. Illidan will no longer change elevation when casting dive just before coming under the effects of the Grave Golem's Binding Roots ability. So I wonder how what that looked like, whether he sort of like sunk down or went straight up. He was like floating in midair or something. Illidan can no longer undo the effects of Shrink Ray by Carson Dive. That's a very clever... Um, I wonder who worked that one out and then started to use that. It's a nice little touch. You would just do that passively anyway, I suppose, because Dive's got such a short cooldown. Malfurion's Life Sea talent no longer triggered while Malfurion is dead. Murky can no longer instantly respawn when he and his egg are destroyed simultaneously. Mur Mur Murky's created... Murlocs created by Murky's March of the Murlocs. Really? Listen to that one. Murlocs created by Murky's March of the Murlocs. Say that 6,000 times. Ability can no longer attach to or damage destructible barrels. I noticed there was a few of those in the game where you could sort of like, if you use Tassadar's Psy Storm or something like that, you could blow up things that had like no impact or any effect on the game whatsoever. They were just doodads, artifacts, things in the game that just didn't mean much. Uh, Murky's deaths are now appropriately recorded on the tab screen when his egg is destroyed before Murky respawns. Nazebo's Gargantua now appropriately follows Nazebo after capturing the Dragon Knight. He does seem a bit rebellious, that Gargantua. Fixed an issue that caused Nova to become stuck in her triple tap animation if the target was killed by its first or second shot. How long did she stay there? I did feel like sometimes she's, she lagged a little bit there, but I don't know whether I ever got the whole benefit of that lag or issue bug. Nova's Hollow Drone now appropriately attacks Treasure Chest on Blackheart's Bay. The cooldown timer for Nova's Precision Strike, a heroic ability, is now appropriately reduced when using basic, when issuing basic attacks with the battle momentum uh, talent selected. Hmm. Ah, oh, that's a shame. 
Uh, kill streak effects now properly displayed on the nameplate for Nova's Hollow DK. DK, decoy, it's not a lich from Warcraft 3. Uh, death and decay, yeah. Fixed an issue that caused damage dealt by Sergeant Hammer in Siege Mode to count towards the tab screen's healing stat. I put this. This. Like, what was that about? Seriously. When I first saw that, I was like, that can't be right. And then as the games go on, fair enough, apparently. She deals 40,000 damage and she heals for 42,000 damage. It was always about roughly almost what she healed for. Uh, what she damaged for. And I mean, that made her an amazing stat whore, basically. When it came to the actual end game stats, you look at your sergeant. You, you look at your sergeant hammer. It's like, oh, he's done this much damage. He's done this much healing. I just kicked ass all game as sergeant hammer. She is pretty good though, regardless. Sergeant Hammer's frosted effects no longer detach from her model when switching camera. Follow on and off again. I wish I tried that. And they just sort of fall off or something. That would look nice and glitchy. I love the sort of glitch things, so these stuff is these things are quite funny. Sergeant Hammer's siege mode targeting graphic is no longer visible through the fog of war, so you can't see what she's doing. Fix several issues that could occur when casting stitches hook on an unstoppable target. I wonder if that's because the hook is an immovable object. Fix an issue that could sometimes prevent an activated talent icon from being added to the ability bar. You don't want that. Cloaked heroes now properly emerge decloaked when released from Stitch's Gorge ability. Tessadar's Psionic Storm ability can no longer be cast slightly outside its intended range. So he was, yeah, he did seem pretty damn good. And that is going to be a slight note to that little fella. Uh, Tychus's Odin model will no longer persist if the Odin dies while Tychus is transforming into it. I believe there was a picture of that up on Reddit for the Heroes in the Storm Reddit page. Someone did that where they were just sort of like moving around as Tychus but they still had like the Odin model. It looked pretty freaking awesome to be honest. It had like his minigun firing but it was like showing the model of the o actual Odin. Tyriel's Righteousness ability can no longer apply its graphic effects on Rainer's Hyperion. Wonder what that looked like. Tyriel will no longer follow his target to the opposing altar when judgment is cast, just as the hero is killed or finishes channeling Hearthstone. So that is also a nice little um, funny glitch. That reminds me of the Warcraft 3 thing, where if you say, for example, an enemy hero is teleporting back and he has like a griffin in the air next to him and he teleports back, you send your bat to unstable concoction on him, on the griffin, and just as he's about to hit, the teleport goes off, but the bat keeps chasing. So that's a pretty awesome thing. That's a similar sort of thing. They they half stone back, but Tyriel keeps chasing. So again, I've missed out on that bug. I wish I saw that once. This is be, be awesome if they just kept like a little test server for these bugs and just said, right, if you wanted to actually see what this looked like, go here. Sagara can now properly place Nidus Worms directly at or next to her current location. That's a nice little touch because I have played it, despite what it says on my profile, I had a another account that was added, um, given to me by a fan. It wasn't given to me, lended rather is the appropriate term for it, whilst he was out, that I could play with and I played like 30 games with Sagara. A lot. I uh, got all of her skin tints and uh, that was one of the things that used to annoy me is I couldn't quite put the Nidus Worm exactly where I wanted it. Um, Ceratol's cleave ability now appropriately damages nearby skeletons in the Haunted Mines when it is used immediately after decloaking. That's the biggest change of them all. Alright, thank you very, very much for staying tuned this long. I do apologise. I know this is, has gone on a long time. My idea was to keep this video much shorter, but um, it's pretty much impossible to do with the amount of changes in this Heroes Technical Alpha patch notes of July 23rd, 2014. Because there's a lot of changes. A lot of changes. So yes, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, then please click the like button. It'll help me out a lot. It'll help others to see it, get into it. If you've got any feedback whatsoever, constructive criticism, please, I will take it on board. Uh, the most obvious one is try to keep the videos as short as possible, but if you've got good suggestions on how to do it, what, for example, what this video did you think I didn't need to mention? What did you like that I mentioned? And if I can get enough people's opinions and stuff like that, I can work things out. And um, yeah. If you want to subscribe to the channel for more Heroes of the Storm content, then please do so. It's youtube.com slash witty1. That's the number one. And the same goes for Twitter. So witty1. So W-T-I-I-1, the number one. For Twitter, Facebook, Twitch. Twitch is actually... Um, I'm not currently streaming at the moment, but I will be streaming in the future. Uh, Twitch.tv slash witty, W-T-I-I. So it's the acronym or... 
initialism, whatever you want to call it. For well, there it is. And uh, yeah, thank you very, very much for watching this fight if you have done. And uh, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. I'll see you later. Yeah, that's nice.